Hello there, this is the video lecture for Chapter 4, Section 3. This is a pretty quick one. We're building on the previous section and other two types of discrete probability distributions. There are a few more formulas and calculator functions for you to note this time, so make sure you get those notes and are keeping track of when to use them. Give yourself hints as we go through them so you don't have to go back. I'll tell you as we go along what to look for. Put hints in with the formulas to help yourself come test time. Speaking of tests, it's about that time. Once you finish this section, you'll be ready for exam two, chapters three and four. Can you believe it? You've done some great work so far. Remember what worked well for you the last time. Make sure you've got your notation, formulas, and calculator notes organized and handy. Make sure you're doing all the check for understanding homework and quizzes in a timely manner, and do practice problems in the study plan if you need some extra preparation. Okay, let's get to this last section. Get started. Welcome to the last section of Chapter 4, everybody. Chapter 4, Section 3, More Discrete Probability Distributions. Last section, we focused on one type of discrete probability distribution, a binomial distribution. This time, we're going to add two more to the list. How to find probabilities using the geometric distribution and how to find probabilities using the Poisson distribution. Let's begin. Let's start with the geometric distribution. Geometric distribution is a discrete probability distribution, and it satisfies four very specific conditions. A trial is repeated until a success occurs. The repeated trials are independent of each other. The probability of success, P, is constant for each trial. And then this is the one that really helps us identify it as a geometric distribution. The random variable X represents the number of the trial in which the first success occurs. So that is what you want to watch for when you're determining whether it's a geometric distribution, when something first occurs. Okay, the probability that the first success will occur on trial X is P, or the likelihood of success, times its complement, or Q, the likelihood of failure, raised to the X minus 1 power, where Q equals 1 minus P. This is the same as when we've been dealing with P and Q before. Now, note this notation. You might be tempted to think of this as a function notation, but this is multiplication. You're multiplying p times q raised to a power. Notice that it is q that is being raised to a power. The p and q are not both in the parentheses, so you're only raising q to a power. Okay, let's see this in action because it can be kind of tricky. A recent study found that the failure rate of businesses after five years is 50%. Four businesses that started five years ago are selected at random. Find the probability that the fourth business selected is the first one to have failed. Okay, so we need to satisfy that it's a geometric distribution first. So can we identify when a success occurs? Well, oddly enough, in this case, the success for the experiment is when a business fails. So that's the first one. Next, are the trials independent of each other? Well, each business's success or failure is independent of the next. So yes. Third, is the probability for success constant? Yes, they told us that the chance for failure after five years is 50% or 0.5. And lastly, what is our X that represents the first success? That would be the fourth business, the first one to fail. See what I mean about it being tricky? Okay, so how do we do this formula? Well, you could just enter it in your calculator as is and be very careful of parentheses and powers or you guessed it, there's a special function in your calculator for this type of distribution. It's called the Geometric Probability Density Function, or Geomet PDF, and you get to it the same way you did the Binome PDF. Here are the instructions for that. If you need to pause the video in order to get these instructions down, please do so. So you get to the function by pressing the second key, then the VARS or Variables key to choose the Distributions menu above it, then arrow up to the bottom of the list and find E Geomet PDF. Make sure it's the PDF option and press enter to select it. Then, depending on your calculator, you may have to enter the variable separated by commas and then close the parentheses or enter the variables and press enter between them. But the variables you will need are P and X and you need to do them in that order. For the previous example, we would need to enter 0.5 for P and 4 for x. Press enter, then enter again to calculate, and that's it. Here's what it looks like and the answer you should have gotten. 
0.0625 or about 0.063. Okay, now we're going to talk about the second type, the Poisson distribution. Again, it is a discrete probability distribution, just like the binomial and geometric distributions, and it has three conditions that must be met. Let's look at those. The experiment consists of counting the number of times an event X occurs in a given interval. The interval can be an interval of time, area, or volume. This is one of the clues that will tell you a given probability distribution is a Poisson probability distribution. It could be something done over the course of a month or a year, or over the area of a state or a county, or filling a lake or something else that has volume. Okay, the second condition, probability of the event occurring is the same for each interval. And the third, the number of occurrences in one interval is independent of the number of occurrences in other intervals. Okay, now one thing that is not mentioned in the conditions that is very helpful in identifying these types of probability distributions is that you're dealing with an average of something happening over an interval. Anytime you see that kind of verbiage, using the mean number of something or the average number of something or typical number of something happening over an interval, that'll clue you in that it's a Poisson probability distribution. Okay, so to the formula. The probability of exactly x occurrences in an interval is mu, or the mean, to the power of x, or the event, times the value of e, that's an irrational number, not a variable, it's about 2.71, raised to the power of negative mu, or the mean, all divided by x factorial, where e is about 2.71818, and mu is the mean number of occurrences. Okay, that one looks like a bear, but let's look at an example. The mean number of accidents per month at a certain intersection is 3. What is the probability that in any given month, four accidents will occur at this intersection? Okay, so first thing, as usual, we need to see if this meets the conditions. So first I look at whether there is an interval of time here. Any given month, yes, definitely. That's my first condition. That also is my first clue that I'm dealing with Poisson rather than any other probability distribution. Then we can look at both whether the probability of the event occurring the same amount in the interval and whether the intervals are independent of each other together. Well, it says mean number of accidents per month. That means they're measuring them separately, which means they are independent of each other. And they've given us the mean, which gives us what we need for our formula. And that is a hint that the event could happen the same amount in an interval. Okay, so we have a time interval, independent trials, and the mention of a mean. So that should tell us that we're looking at a Poisson probability distribution. So what do we need for the formula? We need a mean or mu and an x or event value. Well, they gave us a mean of 3 and the x value in question is 4. They're wondering what the probability of 4 accidents happening at this intersection is. So you can see what a bear this formula would be to enter on your calculator. Lots of very careful parentheses and raising to powers and pressing the second key involved. This is how it would look. Let's not do that. Let's make the calculator do our work for us. You might have guessed the function for the Poisson probability distribution is done the same way as the other discrete probability functions. Press the second key, then the vars or variable key in order to select the distributions menu. Arrow up to get to the bottom of the list and select the C Poisson PDF option. Press enter to select it. Then depending on your calculator, as usual, you've probably gotten used to this part by now, You'll either enter the variables with commas between them and close the parentheses, or you'll enter them pressing enter in between. But you will need to do them in the order mu, or the mean, then the x value. For this example, mu was 3 and x was 4. Then press enter, then enter again to calculate. Please make sure that you're pausing the video and getting these notes about notation and calculator instructions down when you need to. All right. There is also a table in the back of your e-text for Poisson probabilities. You use it the same way as the one from the last section, except you first look at mean, or mu, across the top. Once you find that column, you then find your x value on the left and take that across to the point where they meet. For this example, the mu was 3.6, so they highlighted that column, and the value of x was 7, so they highlighted that one. They intersected at .0425. That is the probability. All right, 
Great job. Told you that was a quick one. Good luck on your test, and I'll see you in Chapter 5.